far as I can recall, there's only one time in my life that I've been to a live performance of a symphony orchestra. It was probably in the early 80s. And there's something I remember about the sound of that orchestra because I heard it in two different ways. The first way I heard it was when all the uh, musicians were tuning up their instruments. As all the audience was settling in, uh, the musicians were tuning their instruments and it was the most horrible sound you could ever hear. Everyone was just doing their own thing. They were making their own sounds, just trying to get ready for their performance. And when the conductor came and he tapped his baton and he got all those same musicians to be ready and the moment he started orchestrating, conducting, he got all those instruments to sound amazing together. They were playing different notes. Some of them were playing long notes. Some, some were playing short notes. But what was happening was there was such harmony to what everyone was playing that instead of what would be called a cacophony when they were all tuning up, it was a beautiful symphony, a harmony of sounds that was absolutely beautiful to listen to, especially in a live setting. This morning, in my time with God, I started out, in a sense, overwhelmed with how many things I had to think about when it comes to praying the way Jesus taught, particularly praying your kingdom come. And there was this morning fuzziness as so many thoughts were demanding attention and yet none of them were connected. And so it was actually almost tiring to try and think of where I should start and what should I focus on. But then all of a sudden, it was like the orchestra started playing. And all these different thoughts were playing at the same time, but now they sounded in harmony. And it was amazing to me to simply feel that, that my mind, my brain could go from what felt like such discordant thoughts because there are so many of them and I didn't know what to focus on. And all of a sudden I could focus on all of them at the same time, just like listening to the harmonies of an orchestra. So, the, the focus, the theme, in a sense, of this part of the symphony was on Jesus teaching us to pray, your kingdom come. And what I realized is that to really appreciate that, there are more thoughts than I can think at one time. And yet they all sound beautiful when you think them all at the same time because they're in harmony with each other. So there's the harmony of the fact that when we pray your kingdom come, part of what we're praying is for right now. We want the kingdom of God and the power and the glory of Jesus Christ to come into people's lives right now. We want his kingdom to come. We want our families, our churches, to experience the power of the kingdom of God. We want the righteousness and the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit to fill our lives and our churches because that's what the kingdom of God is like. So we're looking, God, now, today, let your kingdom come to me, my family, my church, my community. Come, Lord Jesus, let your lordship rule and reign over lives in your kindness bring people to repentance to submit to the lordship of of our savior but then we're also at the very same time we're praying lord we know you're coming one day we know you're coming in your kingdom and in your power and in your glory we know you're coming we know you're going to come and you're going to judge the lost you're going to uh, gather the elect to yourself and father we pray in Jesus' name, let your kingdom come. 
as John said at the end of Revelation, come, Lord Jesus, meaning we're, we're waiting for your return and we can hardly wait. We want to see you come back. As all that is playing, that praying your kingdom come is, is acknowledging that we need your kingdom to come right now today. The power and authority of Christ to be honored and revered by people today. We need that. But we also are awaiting the return of our Savior. The next great event of history. No matter what the world's doing, our Savior's coming back. Lord Jesus, come. Come quickly. On one side, Lord, let your kingdom come today so people could be saved before you come again. But we can hardly wait for you to come again because we want to be with you in your eternal kingdom. But as at, at the same time, what's playing in harmony with all that is the gospel of the kingdom. Because see, we can go all the way back and we can say, the word became flesh to dwell among us. The light came into the darkness. Christ Jesus came into the world. There is good news of great joy for today in the town of David has been born to you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And we can rejoice in this with all our hearts. We can rejoice in it and we can think everywhere Jesus went, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he said to everybody, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. And we can think that's playing all the time. When I'm praying, your kingdom come, that's what I want people to hear. That the time God promised is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand for anyone who would enter it. If we repent, meaning we give up our lives of sin and we believe the good news, which is we attach to Jesus Christ in faith, we enter the kingdom. And then we come to the beautiful Sermon on the Mount that's where we find this disciple's prayer and we have eight Beatitudes singing in eight part harmony what it is like to be blessed by God. And it's not the blessings of religion. It's the blessings of the poor in spirit. It's blessings for those who will mourn their sin. It's blessings for the meek who give up trying to fix their own lives and surrender to the authority of Jesus Christ. It's the blessing on those who hunger and thirst for the righteousness they don't have. And so they become blessed as the merciful and blessed as the pure in heart and blessed as the peacemakers and blessed as those who are persecuted for the sake of the righteousness of the kingdom. And that beautiful eight part harmony is there in the background it, it, singing out to us while we're praying, your kingdom come. Come and bless people with poverty of spirit. Come and bless people with mourning. Come and bless them with all those beatitudes, Lord. And then we, we move ahead and realize that Jesus is saying to sinners, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Isn't that amazing? It is these people who are now praying, your kingdom come, to other people, your kingdom come in its final glory. It's sinners who are now the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That is absolutely amazing. And then just before we come to this disciples prayer, we find Jesus telling his disciples, unless you have a kind of righteousness that exceeds that of the religious elite, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. And what he meant, was that there's a righteousness of faith. The righteous shall live by faith. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel because in it a righteousness of God had been revealed. And so that righteousness is from faith and it's for faith and it's by faith, which is why the righteous shall live by faith. And you realize the righteousness that exceeds that of the religious elite, that exceeds that of religion, is that we are made righteous by faith. And so when we come to the disciples prayer and we pray our father in heaven, we know he's our father by faith. That's harmonizing with everything I'm saying. And we pray 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And that desire for the name of our God to be hallowed, honored, revered, feared, is, is harmonizing with everything I'm talking about. And when we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, that's in absolute harmony. And when we pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that's in harmony. And when we pray, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All of that is in harmony so that we get to the end of the Sermon in the Mount and it's in perfect harmony that there was a wise and a foolish builder. And the wise builder was the one who heard these words of Jesus and put them into practice. And the foolish builder was the one who heard the same words, but did not put them into practice. All that harmonizes. And so we pray, Father, your kingdom come for your glory and for the good of my whole community.